All right, we're doing the Rochester again. And what I found with this, this carburetor that I used, which was the Holly Reman, is it was leaking from the well plugs. So what I want to show you is, I'm just going to bring this up to the camera. And I'm going to do it in front of you in a minute. I, what I've done is, these were not epoxy, so you can epoxy them. But what I did was I sanded this down, or I ground it down, or you can file it down. And what I did here was I filed it down. And then, as you can see on this one, I drilled the center of it, okay, and I then took, drilled the center, I drove a self-tapping in, and you can see that's a pretty solid plug there, that's a well plug, alright, so I drilled that in there, and, and then I drove it in, I drove the self-tapper in, I took a pair of dikes, and I just pried and it came right up. So we're going to do this one next. So I'm going to take another self-tapping screw. And I'm just going to drive it in a little bit. That should be enough. Put my gloves on in case everything goes flying. And I'm going to put this over here. Turn it around so I can get to it. Just gonna put that like that. Nothing fancy. And I'm just gonna hold on to it and just push down. It should come up. This one's not. It might have to be. Ground a little bit more. Fire a little bit more. That's it. And it's out. That's all there is to it. Non-destructive. And it's out. Okay. So I'm gonna walk. I'm going to keep working on this. I don't think you guys need to see everything torn down because I already did that already. So we're just going to put this on the side. So that's the, that's the rear. And the next is these well plugs in the front. Now, I'm going to sand these flush and try to get a center punch on that. I'm probably just going to drill them out and tap them for the appropriate um, plug. That seems like it's a better idea right now. Whereas this, I actually had to take the plug out. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to stop here and I'm going to move to filing this down so I can get a proper set of punch. We're going to drill it with an 8 pipe tap, put a 1032 tap in there, and we'll see what happens. And just so you see what I used, I experimented with a few files, uh, bastard files, rat tail. This one seemed to work pretty good. This is like a rat tail. Uh, this one was really nice. And this one, too, is really nice. And the wider file to clean up and finish so that you get a nice finish. And you can actually see the plug coming through so you know where to tap um, and drill. And it gets it nice and flat without removing too much material. You just want to remove the little bit of excess of casting that's keeping that plug in, that well plug in. So I'm going to go back to it, and we'll be back in a little bit. So, so far we've got this file down pretty flat and you can almost see as you file it and you get to a certain point you'll see the difference between the plug and um, the casting itself. Now I don't think you can see that on here. I don't know if it's going to focus. It's not really focusing. but. The idea, you'll see it, you'll just about see it, take a really sharp punch, and you can just about almost go through it with the punch, it's so soft. So, what we've got here is the punch, and I used a small ball penis hammer. We've got the ball penis hammer. Here is a 1032 tap, this one here is a starting tap. And you can start with that and then finish up with a flat bottoming tap because you don't really want to go in there with this. So I've got that ready. And I've got, these are the Allens. We're going to go in there, the set screws. And a 1 8 drill. Um, and we're just going to put a little bit of lubricant on that. And just very carefully, I'm going to go in and try to get it as straight as I can. Not a lot of room for error here. And 
So I'm going to recommend a variable speed. We're going to go slow until we just break through. That's it. Broke through. Okay. Blow it off. Repeat the process. Just a little bit of lubricant. Don't really need it because it's such soft, soft metal. But I do recommend a 1.8. That one went in pretty far. I'm not sure why this one didn't. There we go. That's nice. <coughs> clean it off. And let's clean the carb off. So, now we'll take it. I'm just going to tap this. Both of them. Starting off with this tap, which is the center locating tap we're trying to cut our way in. Um, probably go to the next size up, which is 21. I think it's number 21. But it's so soft. I want it to be as tight as possible. There's not a lot of material here. It's just starting to grab, so we're going to run this tap in. Just on the grab. Not quite yet. Ah, that's nice. Now that it's grabbing, we'll back it out. Oh, that looks nice. And I'm just going to go in a little bit further. Just to get the chunk off the threads. We don't want to damage anything. No, that's good enough. And then I'll finish with the bottom of the tap. clean this really good so I'm going to finish taking it apart when I'm done. And I want to try a little bit of electrolysis on this and see if I can plate this with some zinc and I have some uh, allodine solution that I can put on this. But we're going to do a test on some other parts first. So if that's the case I'm going to try just to put a light coating of uh, zinc and allodine back on this. And that'll clean it up really good to get all the junk out of the casting. I'll wash it. And I'll do all of that before I put the epoxy and the plugs in, for, you know, permanent. Right, it's starting to go in. And I'll clean this off. Because it, it galls up the, th the threads. I don't know if you can see that, but it, it definitely galls up the threads. Because it's so soft. That's actually part of the plug. Okay, put a couple of threads in there. Alright, that's good. Now we're going to switch to the bottom of the tap. See, this is some of the overcasting. Right. Loop thread, cutting oil, and it goes. We'll drive that in there. Oh yeah, you can tell. Now, I don't want to go 
too far because I don't know how far to put the plug. So let's do a test on that. Clean it out. Let's see how far this plug goes in. It looks like we're pretty good over there. Got a lot of two to work with. So this is going in pretty deep. Ah, uh, see? It starts to get tight. So that looks good. So we want to drive it in just a little bit more. I want it to seal and, and bottom, well, not quite bottom out, but let's see here. It's about that far. Now I don't want to interfere with the flow to block the transfer. why it'll go all the way in and that's why we're going to need something to stop it which is what you're going to be using the JV weld for so it's going to seal in its place so this one just about goes all the way in and it kind of stops so instead of let's see what we've got here we'll be back in a bit All right, now, what I'm planning on doing is, let's see if you can see this, I'm taking a, a plug, uh, this is a Allen uh, National Pipe, I think it's, I forget what size it is, uh, but I'm machining it down on the grinder, removing all the threads and I'm going to run it in the tap, in the die, to put threads on it, and I've already done a couple, so I want to do one more. Um, because you got to be careful when you're rolling the uh, die over it, <coughs> because you'll chip the threads. So I want to do one more to remove, just to avoid any chipping. I don't think you can really see that because one of them's a little chipped. So I want good threads, and then I'm going to run seven sixteenths by twenty. Fine. Now I saw a guy on the internet that did it seven sixteenths by course. And this just, I don't really recommend that. I mean, you could do it, but there's just so little room in there. So I'm going to run this. And uh, I want to make sure I have two good plugs made. <clears throat> I'm comfortable before I run the tap in there. All right, be back. All right, we're back with the carb mod. And let me see if I can bring this up to the camera. So this is the second day. I worked late last night. And I want to show you the mods here. So this is what it's going to look like when you're done. This is tapped out. These are tapped out. And it looks uh, looks pretty good. Now this was a car body that was remanned by Holly a ways back. And now it's time. This is all clean. And what I did was is I made these. Now hopefully they'll seal. them. Get a look at that. And I just ground them down. I started off with a pipe plug and ground off the threads and then ran it into the tap. So now we have 7 16 20. And I adjusted the size so that it will fit nicely into here. So that's going to go down there like that and it'll go pretty much almost all the way down. So the next step now is to mix up some epoxy and get that on there. And then you want to let it set for 24 hours. So I'm going to take a, an ice cream stick and uh, go to the next stage. So I gotta be real careful with this because you wanna get it on those threads really, really good. So I'm gonna cut this this stick. 
try to make something that I can get in there. Make almost like a paintbrush out of it. Just make sure we don't leave it uh, to where it's splintering off and leaving pieces of wood because that won't seal. And you can use a cute uh, a toothpick. In fact, you know what? I don't even want to get me one of those. Get a cute tip, uh, toothpick on standby, and even a Q-tip. If you remove some of the fluff off the end of it. Zoom in a little bit. I know this should be a little bit higher. Okay, here we go. Get my glasses for this. This, this carb is from the 69 Nova with the Pontiac Ram Air 400 in it. And it ran really good, but it leaked out. This is one of the carbs I actually got to run well. I'd really love to just, uh, you know, redo this whole carb with the zinc. But I haven't perfected that process yet. Then again, I haven't spent much money or time on it either. nice about this is this is the quick epoxy so you don't have much time to work with it but it sets up in five minutes it's a little cold in here and, you know, most of this stuff is recommended for higher temps. Let's see if that's enough. 70 degrees, so it's not quite that in here. Really didn't have the heat on. I don't really need the heat on. It's Easter Sunday, and I do need to get back in the house.
That's not good. It's like wasting a perfectly good tube. Where most of it seems okay, but the end is not good. Shit. It's always a fucking problem. because it's five minute and they put enhancers in it which make it unstable as a product on the shelf. And since most people don't buy the stuff anymore because they don't fix anything. Yeah. It's like a putty. it up. main thing is to get it on the first few threads. And just try to push it and stir it around. same thing. We're going to roll this into here. Everything's got to be clean. Now, we don't want too much on this because we already have some in the inside. That's tight. I don't want to tighten 
up good. Hit the other one. Make sure you get it in the threads. That's perfect. just a little bit more on this one just around the outside. but it stays on there. That's beautiful. Now we're going to work the threads on the big one, on the big end. take care to just get it on the threads without going too deep. And if you catch it before it hardens, you're okay because it will flow. If you warm the casting a little bit, not much though. You don't want to warm it too much. This looks really good. We're just trying to seal the plug in there. going down in there but that looks about right just want it on the threads you know, so that it's inside the threads especially around the top it's starting to get a little thick so we need to work a little faster sets up too quick. Take off any excess that you don't want. Because you just want to coat the threads.
better one it's still I have to mix up a little bit more and flow it over the top Yep, we'll mix up a little bit more and we'll flow it over the top. That's one of the reasons why I don't like five minute. If I was just doing one, it'd be fine. If you put too much on, don't worry. You can sand it down, check it for fit. But it's better to get it on there now. sticks better when it's it's wet, it just does that. And that's it. That is it. Just leave it because you can sand it later, file it. <clears throat> and that's what it looks like. And hopefully that seals. If not, you have to heat it, run a tap through it again, clean it all out, and test it. <clears throat> they say the best thing you can do to test it is just to stick it in some soapy water and block off any passages. Now, I don't know what the hell that means because, you know, you really need to look in there, so it's not going to be easy to do, but I think if you fill a big enough container of water and you stick it sideways, you should be able to tell by pushing compressed air into these channels whether or not it's going to come out. So I'll just leave it like that. Let it set up. Twenty-four hours to get it good and hard. And do a little sanding and you're good to go. Alright, we'll be back for a test. Okay, so this is this is the install. And I'm pretty pretty happy with the way it looks. Although I put on the JB Quick Weld and I'm not happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reapply on the top and see what happens. I took this off and I used a little tiny little wire wheel on the Dremel tool and uh, cleaned it back off again. But this is the carb body and I actually out cleaned it up and aladdined it and it looks pretty good. Um, this is the Rochester Reman. This was in really nice shape. Probably didn't have to do these because these have a new style plug that was put in it. It's this that usually, this is the primary that usually leaks. But hopefully it won't leak now. I checked them to make sure they were tight. Uh, let's see what happens. Alright, we're going to do, heads up, we're going to do a leak test. So I've got some soapy water here. And I've also got some gas leak and detector cow blue. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of this on there as well. And I'm just going to take compressed air, put a little hose on the end of it, and I'm going to blow it in into the primary ports with a with a jet stick. Cover over the hole. No bubbles. I'm going to do both. And again, cover over the hole over here with the thumb. 
There's no bubbles there. They're looking for bubbles. Yes. Is Bubbles home? I want to date Bubbles. Right, this has already got Bubbles on it. So let's let's just smear that off. But you'll see Bubbles foaming. It's a little too much actually. Okay, so I'm gonna blow through here. Now, I don't see anything. The last one is right over here. I'm not sure how I'm going to really get to that one other than blow through in here. And that one tends to leak too, but we're not seeing anything on this casting. And a lot of these later model castings are very nice. So we don't see anything here. So we're going to do some dry this off and good and let it dry before I say but this is the first pass uh, through the sandblast of the glass beads that's not bad sorry that's the air compressor but it looks pretty damn good considering it's a lot shinier and you see that it'll come out almost white but it's clean you know one more pass through the sandblast the bead blaster and I'm going to clean it in a very mild degreaser so I can get off any of these fingerprints I might be getting on it as I'm touching it. And then it's going to go into a picking, pickling solution and then into the plater. So I want to get this cleaned up and I want to get uh, my next step. I have the, the top to do. I'm going to let this dry off a little bit more. So I got the top to do next. Sandblast that out, get that nice and clean, and we'll be back in a bit. So I don't see any leaks, but it's a good idea. That I'm going to put. I tried the, uh, the the JB Weld Marine on the casting I did earlier a week or so ago, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I might put a little bit on there just to sealing, just to make sure, and not get carried away with it. Let it dry for 24 hours. But we're going to sign off. We'll be back in a little bit. That looks pretty good. Carb is good to go. I put everything on. I don't think we'll have any issues. Should be good to go. Very nice. This has all been basically tinned with uh, zinc. So what you're looking at is zinc for all the shiny stuff that's not going to rot and the carpet's back together and we should be golden that does look nice smart looking and let's check the color up here stand by 